Hello there, welcome back. I'm Ron Mullet. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this six foot long, three foot wide dining table. It has breadboard ends. It's, the top is oak, the bottom is poplar. It's got some nice inlay details around the bottom. And there's a special little secret drawer down here. Well, it's not so little. It's made for the client's jigsaw puzzles to take off the table, put in the drawer, close it up, and you don't have to disassemble it. So let's get started. The next thing is to straight line these boards to get a good glue surface because I'm gluing up several boards. I don't have a jointer. I've been able to use my table saw to get perfectly straight glue lines, and I'm pretty sure you can too if you use this method. First of all, I take the narrowest part of the length of board and this one is seven and seven eighths. Now down at that end of the board is a little over eight inches. So I'm going to set my fence at a little less than this dimension down here. And then I'm going to run the straight line that comes from the uh, lumber yard against my fence. And then, after I've made that cut, I'm going to turn the board end for end, and I'm going to move it over about a sixteenth of an inch. This is an eighth inch blade, so just about half of the blade width. And the reason I only move it just a sixteenth of an inch is that way I won't cause any blade deflection going through a lot of wood. Now that's two cuts. I'll move it over a sixteenth of an inch, cut the other side, move it a sixteenth of an inch, and cut the other side, so I'll end up with two completely parallel sides, and they're perfectly square. And I didn't lose much of this board. It was seven and seven eighths. I lost a quarter of an inch off of this board doing that. And I don't know how much you would lose using a jointer since I don't have one. One other key thing you have to do is make sure you keep that pressed against the fence the whole way through because if you don't and that board does a little bit of this, it'll mess up your glue line. This will work on your table saw. I know it will. I used my biscuit jointer on all my tabletop glue ups. Not for strength, but for alignment. Okay, let's see how this fits. Looking pretty good so far. Then I start in the middle. Clamp that down. Oh my. Yeah, you can see that glue squeeze out already. Then I slowly work my way out. That's some nice glue squeeze out the full length of that glue up, and that is straight off the table saw. Okay, I've got both halves glued together. Now I'm going to put the big halves together, and I've got them on my, on my bench extenders. I've got a video on how I made these. They're very simple, easy to make, and this is over three feet wide, and my bench is not nearly that long. So this really makes it a lot easier to assemble something large and flat like this. So here we go. Get these started in here. And this great big one, I like to start right in the middle, pull it together first, and then work my way out from there. Once again, a really nice glue line straight off the table saw. Now it's time to move on to the breadboard ends. I cut a slot in the breadboard and then run it through both ways to make sure that the slot is in the center of the board. I'm using a quarter inch dado stack. Now the next thing to do, I've got the groove cut in the breadboard. The next thing to do is cut the tenon on this. Now I've got my router set up 
On the bottom, I've got a fence that I'm going to ride against here, and I've got a three-quarter inch wide flat bottom bit. I'm going to run it across here and get establish the line where the breadboard will fit against, and then I'll come back and just hog out the rest of it. Some snappy TikTok music would really work well here, but I don't have any. Okay, I've cut both sides. See how close this comes, how uh, this fits on here. Yeah, that'll be good. Of course, this will go close up there once I cut the individual tenons in here and cut the mortises deeper. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. <clears throat> now, I'll take this to my mortising machine. I've already cut a one inch deep mortise. But these tenons are going to be an additional one inch, so I'll have to cut a one inch mortise down in here. I hope that makes sense. I love this little rotating tool stand I made. I can easily switch between my grinder and my mortising machine. It has a drawer in the bottom that I can store all the accessories. Okay, I've marked where I want to cut between the tenons. I've got a piece of wood that is one inch wide and it's the same height as this piece here. In my router, I've got a pattern cutting bit. This bearing will ride against this piece of wood and this I'm just going to cut out. Okay, a little bit of fine tuning on these tenons. Yep, I'm liking that. Now it's time to put the dowels in. I put a couple marks here where the tenon is, and I know the length of it, so I'll find the center of that. That way I'll know where to drill the dowel hole. And then to find the center, I'll just go corner to corner, strike a line. I've got a sacrificial board underneath here so it doesn't blow out the bottom. When I'm doing this, I like to use Forstner bits. They just are a nice, cleaner cut, and I have a lot feel like I have a lot more control. These outside holes are not going to get glued and I need to elongate them just a little bit so that if this moves, table moves, it'll be able to move. Uh, I'm just going to use a rat tail file and not open it up a lot. And then the dowel goes in and it has room to move. Okay, now it's time to put the dowels in. I'm going to glue only the center when this side doesn't get glued. Glue-ups always make me nervous, especially big things like this, like tables and things like that, because once the glue goes on and you put it together, there's really no going back. I also put some down in the mortise. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, I'm going to put glue on this center dowel. Get these glue or the grain going the same direction. 
I'm going to put just a little dab of glue on this dowel so that it will stay this top piece of wood. Now it's time to cut these dowels off. In order to do that and not damage the surface, I'm going to take a playing card. wonder what this is. Oh, King of Diamonds, okay. Take a playing card, use the same drill bit that I drilled the holes with. Set that down over there. Take the saw. Lay it on the playing card. Never touch it. Got a slight little bit stuck out there. And now just take a plane or, or my orbital sander and clean that off. Now it's time to cut the table to width. Now it's time to move on to the legs and the aprons. I'm going to make them out of a poplar because they're going to be painted. This is a uh, eight quarter poplar board. It's seven inches wide and it's ten feet long. I can get four legs out of here. I want the legs to be th about three, three and a half inches square. So I'll cut this down the middle and then put them together so I'll end up with a nice square chunk of wood. Okay, I'm going to use my mortising machine to cut the mortises in the legs. I've got the top of them marked, uh, right front, left front, etc. on the top with an arrow pointing to the inside edge of each one, inside corner. Now I need to lay out the mortise. I've got the line laid out here for the apron width, which is four, four inches, but I want the mortise to be three inches long, and I want it to be in five-eighths of an inch from the outside of the leg. First of all, I've got my legs in my square, which is attached to this. That way everything is good and square. The first mark I'm going to make is with the to mark the top length of the mortise. And then to get my three inch length, I take another square, put it across there. There's my three inch length. Now then to get my depth, I'm going to actually the depth, the, the depth this way. You know what I mean. I can't talk sometimes. But I've got it marked where the tenon is going to go on each one. So I just make a mark like that. Now I know that that right there is going to be cut out. I don't need this mark down here because I'm using a half inch mortising bit. Uh, so I'll have a straight line there to do it with. The next step is to cut tapers on the legs. I'm going to cut them on two sides. The legs are three inches square and I'm going to cut them down to two and a half inches at the bottom. I've struck a line on the bottom where I want and then up here at the top I've struck a line that is one inch below where the apron will set. That's the part that I want to taper. I'm going to use my tapering jig. What this is is a piece of plywood with dovetail grooves cut in it. I've got these micro jig clamps that are dovetail. These will go in. Then I'll take my leg, line that line up right there with that, and then come up here where I want the taper to end and line it up up here. These are excellent clamps, by the way. Now I'll run this against the fence and my bandsaw blade will cut the taper. So now I end up with four legs with a nice taper on the inside edges. I'm going to have to use a hand plane and clean this all up because the bandsaw doesn't cut it nearly as smoothly as a regular table saw would, but I enjoy using hand tools a lot. I've cut the aprons to four inches wide 
and now it's time to cut the tenons on these. I put a stop block here that will measure the depth of the tenon, which is an inch and a half. And next I'm going to cut the, the width of the tenon. Now I've readjusted this to cut the cheek on the tenon. Leave my depth stop exactly the same place. One thing I think feel is important to know is that when you're using a dado stack like this, you have to put a lot of downward pressure because all of those blades will try to raise this up and then you end up with an imperfect cut, which is, can be very frustrating. All right, let's see how these tenons fit these mortises. This is right off the table saw. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, that's going to make a good healthy joint. I've got the legs and the aprons all uh, dry fit together sitting on the bottom of the table. Now I need to work on the structure uh, for the drawer. The drawer front is going to be 36 inches long and I need that to be centered in the apron. So I got a store, cut a story stick here, 36 inches long, found the center line of that, found the center line of this apron. Now I can line those two center lines up, make a mark, make a mark, and that's exactly centered drawer front. Now then for the runners that are going to go front to back, I'm using the same stock as the aprons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a, a rabbit in the apron, and then I'm going to cut a rabbit in the drawer runner. That will fit down in there, and once that gets secured in there, the drawer front will have a stop that will make the front of the drawer perfectly parallel. Now on the back end, I'm just going to make a three quarter inch wide dado down in there to put the other end of the runner in. So the apron, I've got the rabbit cut there. The drawer slide, I've got the rabbit cut there. Those will be secured together like that. And then when the drawer front closes, it'll have a place to stop and it'll be nice and flush across the front. So I cut the dado in the back apron, cut this to length, put it in there. I've got these sides all clamped up, they're square. And then when the drawer front closes, it'll have a nice stop to kit against. Okay, the next step is to add a beading to the bottom of all the aprons and the drawer front. I've got a beading bit. It's got a half inch shank in my, in my router table. Now it's time to add drawer runners and concentrate on the drawer structure here a little bit more. What I'm going to use is a piece of aluminum angle iron and I'm going to mount it on that piece right there and I'm going to raise it up about five-eighths of an inch that way on the bottom of the drawer I can cut a dado across here to put the drawer bottom in and still have enough meat down here that it won't want to break off. Got them both mounted on there I think that'll work just fine. The piece that I'm using is only going to be about a quarter inch thick so drawer will open, come in close Now I'm going to work on the drawer. This is a drawer front and I've got this nice piece of quarter inch hardboard has a nice finish on it that I'm going to use this for the bottom of the drawer. The problem is it's a quarter inch thick so it doesn't have a lot of, of uh, integrity. It's pretty loose, floppy. So I'm going to, in the drawer front, I'm going to cut a dado across here to put this in 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, I've got the drawer bottom fit into the drawer front. It fits nicely, everything is good. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is put these pieces of half inch wood around the outside edges of this bottom. Now I'm not going to dovetail or fasten the sides and the back all together necessarily like you would on a regular drawer because this is a big drawer, but it's not gonna have anything really heavy, primarily jigsaw puzzles. And all I want to do is put these on so that I can stop this from flexing and give this big quarter inch wide piece of bottom some stability. Okay, both sides and the back are secured. This is just stuck on the dado, the front. That is a nice solid drawer right there. I'm pleased with that. 
Okay, now it's time to cut the detail in the bottom of the legs. I'm using a half inch straight cut bit. Now there's a lot of things that I have to take into consideration here because these legs are tapered on two sides, flat on two sides. That means that I'm going to have to be cutting at a compound angle two different times on this leg in order for the cut to be parallel with the bottom and at the same depth all the way across. So to make these slots parallel, if I put this straight piece and this straight piece, the two outside corners, if I put them against this surface and the fence, everything is square. Now when I flip it this way, I've still got a flat space here, but here I have, a, I have the uh, taper. So that's where these cutoffs are kind of come in handy. So I'll put the cutoff in there. That will raise this up so that now this cut will be square. Now for this last cut, a tapered side will be on the table and a tapered side will be against the fence. So I'm going to have to use two wedges, one on the table and one on the fence. This is now a compound angle. Yeah, worked out pretty well. I'm happy with that. They all came together in a straight line all the way around. Okay, at this point in the build, I don't know what I'm going to end up putting as an inlay in here. You already know because you've seen the beginning of the video. But what I'm doing is I'm going to paint these all white. And so I'll put the, I've cut these little strips to fit down in here. And then I'm going to use CA glue. And then after that's painted, I'll take and pop these off. And then I'll decide what I want to use as an inlay. Now it's time to start the glue up. I'm going to glue up the ends first, let them dry, and then I'll glue up the long aprons. This turntable I made certainly makes it easy to paint things in this paint booth, especially when they're this big. I'm going to put three coats of a latex paint on this. Okay, now that the table base is completely painted, I need to figure out what I want to do with the inlays around here. First of all, I have to knock these pieces out that I put in there. So after a couple iterations of what I want to put in there, I've decided on this. I've cut some pieces of oak down to fit in there, and I've stained them the same color as the top. I'll put them in like this. I don't need a clamp. I can just do a little rub joint on them because... Put the two on the outside. Now the ones with the curved end. Now it's time to sand the top. I'm going to sand it once with 100 grit and then a second time with 150 grit. I've gone over the seams with the card scraper, flattened those out as much as I can get. First thing I'm going to do is just take a, take a pencil and just make a lot of lines on here all the way. Now I'll know when I've got it sanded down to where it needs to be. I'm not going to video any of this sanding because I'm sure you would skip right through it anyway. I know I would. So, time to get sanding. Now it's time to stain this top. I'm using a gray, it's a Verithane, it's a gray stain. I'm going to use a rag to apply it 
rather than a brush because I want to be able to scrub the stain down into the grain really deep. Now I'm ready to put a top coat on this tabletop. So what I'm using is a water-based top coat. It's General Finishes, high-performance satin. This is one of the best water-based uh, top coats you can buy. And I'm using a Worcester Pro paintbrush, which is top of the line also, made in my hometown. I'm going to put a total of three coats on top of this stain. All right, let's set this thing up and see what it looks like. Yeah! I've got a bunch of other woodworking videos on my channel. I sure would appreciate it if you check them out. Hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you on my next one.